So, okay, we have a domain model, we have a few, re we have a few requirements and we have a, uh, have a domain model. So we have a, a pretty good un understanding about uh, what to actually do here. Um, so what is the next step? God, I won't touch it anymore. So, okay, the next step, sequence diagrams. Okay, how should we do the sequence diagrams then? What should we, where should we start? Start game. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. Because start game is like the, the first thing that happens. And we need to start the game before we can do anything else. And it's kind of like the uh, a simple starting point also to get us up and running. So, okay, uh, we should do design for, for the start game uh, requirement. But before we can start doing the this kind of like detailed design, what should we do before that? What is the first thing in our little process that we need to decide upon? We need to decide upon the architecture of the application. So, we have an interactive system. We should probably go with a model view separated architecture and why not select the MVC architecture also. So, we know kind of like how to structure our implementation and design from the start so that we don't add this uh, that can become kind of like messy afterwards. So let's get a basic structure up and going. Uh, that is not where I want to be. I want to be in my remote desktop. Here we go. So Let's start by just adding a and maybe we should do a Java folder <coughs> and another blackjack folder. And here we have the model. View. Uh, 
and the controller packages. So, that is not correct, so, okay. Um, I think I will try to switch to this uh, small web service for doing for doing uh, sequence diagrams because the smart board seems to not be uh, working really uh, in a good way today. So, uh, and I think this will suffice. You can probably select plain UML. What is that? Yeah, maybe that is better. I don't know. So now we can can take a look at our requirement uh, and start the game. So create the cards and shuffle the cards. That is what is supposed to happen. So who should be responsible for creating the cards? Do we have anything in our design as of yet? No, this is just some, uh, maybe could type start game. The deck class creates all the cards, yeah? I think that is also a good point because we don't have any design to, to uh, look back to. So we kind of like look at our domain model and we are supposed to create a lot of uh, cards. And uh, a natural thing could be that, okay, since the deck contains the cards, it should also be responsible to, to uh, create them. So the deck, should get the message to start the game. Uh, I don't know if we can do like these anonymous messages in this application. No. So, all right. The deck starts, uh, gets a message to start the game, and the deck is supposed to create the, uh, the cards. So deck card. Notation here is not perfect, but something like like this. Yeah, and we probably want all the cards to be created in this way. And and while we're creating them, maybe we should also add them to the deck so that we know that they're in the deck when we have created them. Uh, add card. Oh, maybe just add. Maybe, oh no, do it like this deck. Deck. Add. So, 
now we kind of like have something to start with at least. So uh, we now have a small design. We have a deck that gets a, a message to, to start uh, or be created. And the deck creates a card and adds the cards to itself. So based on this sequence diagram, we could do a class diagram also. And maybe we can take a chance on the smart board. We have a deck. And we have a card. And we have some kind of relationship here because the deck needs, a deck object needs to create card object. That is, needs to call the constructor of the deck. So what kind of relationship do you think we should have here? between deck and card, and what kind of relationship? Yeah, so we have an association. Where should the arrow be? At the end of the the card side, yeah. Yeah. No. And you can look at the sequence diagram actually and see where do the messages go? Where do, do these arrows point to? And this is, must be the same. So then we need a dependency or a rela relationship of some kind in the same direction. Uh, looking at the sequence diagram only, you cannot really decide if it's supposed to be a uh, association or a dependency right now. But we can probably conclude that the cards will be used later on. So we probably need to store them in, uh, to be accessible in other operations in the deck. So association is a, probably the, the best choice for now. But based on just the sequence diagram, you cannot really tell. So you need to to look a little bit further. So we should add a multiplicity. So many cards um, is probably the best and uh, a role name also. So let's just name it the cards or M underscore cards. Yeah, I think uh, why I did not put 52 there is that in the domain model, it kind of like was helpful to know that the deck contains 52 cards. But when you think about it a little bit more, the deck will probably contain less cards as we play because we will remove cards from the, from the deck and give it to the players. And it's also so that uh, the multiplicity in the domain model for the hand is not entirely correct also because when you start the game, neither the player nor the dealer has two cards. But it makes better sense uh, in, in the domain model to, to put these multiplicities because that is what you actually use to play with. But in the design now, we will probably need to remove the cards. So it won't be 52 cards in the deck all the time. So, all right, let's uh, go into implementation. The first question we have now is, okay, um, where should we put these two classes? Model view or controller? I hear some uh, whispering of mode, model. 
and we also have model in, in, in the, the chat here. So yeah, of course the model, because this is kind of like central concepts in the domain. We find them in the domain model. So that's a good hint that these are model uh, types, model classes. So let's do that then. And also looking at this diagram, you can, can see that the card class will be the easiest one to start with because it depends on nothing right now. If we would be to implement the deck class, we would need the card class first. So you can use these diagrams also to guide you in where to start to implement your, your feature. So remote desktop, where are you? Here we are. So the model, we add the deck card class first, uh, card. Blackjack uh, model class. card and we need a constructor and we also need these color and value information yeah I made the the class public we, we could have it we could have it like this for now we will see later if it needs to be public or not that is visible outside of its, of its package. <coughs> what should the color and value information, how should we store that? Yeah, so there is, is uh, onto something. The color has four possible choices. So, but what type should we use to capture those four possible choices? <laughs> an integer. Why an integer? Yeah, but we only have four possible va values. So zero, one, two, three. Yeah. yeah, but what about all the other values we can have for an integer? 57 or 17 or minus 352. Using an integer, we could assign these values to that, that card. So we need to check all the time. Is this a valid card? Is it between 0 and 3? So while integer, it would be possible to, to use. And we could use a string, or we could use any kind of like catch-all type there. It is not a very good choice, because we can make errors. So it would be better for us to uh, use something else. And luckily, all good uh, programming languages has enumerations. So we can use enumerations instead. And PHP does not have enumerations. <laughs> so, and I have actually prepared this so that we will not need to type uh, 500,000 uh, uh, things here. So we can do it like this, and we have the card, and we have an enumeration to capture the color. Hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs. And I personally like to add a count towards the end, so that you can know how many there are. 
we will use this later on also so and actually the same thing for for the values Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, knight, queen, king, ace, count. And this also now means that we can use types. We can add attributes of color. Like that. And this will be type safe. You can't assign color or value something invalid. The count is the, the uh, will will get assigned a, a value that um, represents the number of that are present in the enum. So count will be thirteen in the name uh, in this case and it will be four in this case that's a little bit of uh, trickery so never mind that so much for now And you can see the value of using these enumerations really right now, because what would happen if you type wrong here and you had, had integers on both? That arrow would slip through. But if I try to assign the color to the value, the compiler will complain. Yeah, enum start at zero. In all good languages. So maybe we should try to compile this uh, before going any further. So, at least we have uh, the card class compiled and, and up and running. Maybe we should do some kind of uh, main class also, just to get things uh, testable to, to some kind of degree here. I'll just name it uh, Blackjack. No class definition found. Wrong name, black jack. Could not find the main class, black jack. Did I make some kind of stupid mistake here? Did we get a class file? Yes, we did. 
just take a look at the this one and maybe we will catch the error. Public static void main string. Maybe I didn't make it public. Yeah. So there we go. We at least have something up and running, and we could uh, could uh, try to create a card here also, just to to be uh, be sure. So we're trying to create the Ace of Spades card. Uh, and we will try to save and we will try to compile. And black F model card. Uh, cannot find symbol class model. not a good idea to rename this one Blackjack. Uh, Try that instead. Didn't I rename it? Oh, I will name the class file. Model card is not public, so we need to make it public now to get it working because it's not visible outside the package otherwise. And yeah, finally. And we have the run. And nothing happens because there is nothing to do here. Could, could leave that so we know that something is happening. Maybe we could print the card as is. I don't know. 
so that we could see something, maybe. Something was at least created, a, a object with an ID here and a, a type. So, okay, something it, it is happen, happening. Yeah, I, I, of course you could, you could shorten things out, but I, I like to actually see that it's queen and king instead of q and k. Uh, how would you do with two and three? And 10. So I think you should name things what they are and the, the typing is, is not a, a big issue. It won't take that much more time. Maybe we can uh, get the, the color. Uh, uh, get color and try something like that instead and see what we get out. Oh, we, we actually got got something a little bit prettier. And we got the ace of spades. So, okay, some some uh, the uh, the um, basics. Yeah, two string is some some kind of method you also can probably use. But I but I think we will probably need to return the color and value stuff from cards anyway. So we could use that uh, to begin with at least to get something up and running. So we you know the card card uh, class seems to work. We can assign the color and the value. And uh, we could now start working on the deck also. Oh, no. cool little class files we got there. New text document deck. So inside of this uh, class, we we need to create a card. Uh, so maybe we can uh, steal the code from here for now. So we need a card, and we don't need that because we are in the same package right now. So, and we then need to add the card, add card, or just add, I think we named it. So we also need this function, add. So, 
So, all right. Where should the cards be stored? This association that we made. It's supposed to be named M cards at least. And we know that it should store many cards. So we need to make a decision here. And uh, I will go for a list uh, once more. So that also needs to be created. Maybe you should use another name here also. Include in deck. Or maybe you just need this. Yeah, the A underscore is uh, an old habit of mine of just uh, noticing that this is an argument. This is a member. And this is an argument. That can be up to your own preference. If you have an ID that supports color coding, these stuffs, you, you don't need that. Uh, I prefer using them out of old habit. Other people have other uh, ways of of, uh, of doing this. You could probably use an array list or there could be a number of different uh, collection classes that you could you could go for here but uh, I select, selected the list and the linked list just because I'm a little bit more used to them and in this case it doesn't really matter what we choose. It's no, no huge data uh, amounts of data that we need to handle so performance won't be an issue. Um, if performance um, is an issue, we could uh, hint what to use in the design, for example. If we knew that, okay, this will be huge amounts of cards and we need to, to uh, uh, get and put cards at the front of this uh, item a lot, then you can, you can do select a data type that is better at that than, than others. So uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter. So OK, this is maybe not that, that cool, but uh, let's just try and compile at least and see if it uh, would like to run. It compiled. Maybe we should in here, instead of creating a card, we should try creating a deck then. Something like that. Uh, yes, uh, try to try it out. Nothing weird happened, at least. So uh, we have this basic structure, at least. But so, something should should uh, be added here, and we need to loop over all the colors and all the values. And I have prepared this uh, in beforehand, like a little chef. So it will look something like. Uh, this instead. So, and the code here is not really that 
that important. But we loop over all, all, over all the, the, uh, the colors and all the values. And we create a card using these uh, values and these uh, colors. Colors and values. And depending on your programming, programming language, you will probably do this in, in slightly different ways. For some reason, I had add card in my cookbook code. So let's rename that to add. And lastly, but not least, we should also shuffle. So we need some kind of functionality for this. So let's just add that. We will try and compile. Compiles. And just for the sake of, of testing, let's add a printout here so that we know that at least something is being, uh, being added to, to the deck. So. And this is, of course, a big, big no-no. But in the heat of development and in the heat of um, needing to run things, oop, we just added a violation to our architecture. So we need to make sure that we remove that later on. But at least we get now, OK, we have a number of hearts. We have a number of spades and diamonds and clubs and we can probably see here also that we have from two three four five six seven eight nine ten knight queen king and ace so we have a full deck knights should be yak yeah maybe so i think um, that is pretty much what we can uh, get covered today any questions Should knight really be jack? Isn't that the joker? Ah, I don't know. We could name the game Black Knight instead. So anyway, questions? And this is the basic structure of, of working. You do a little bit of design. You do a little bit of implementation, and then you move back to do a little bit of design, and you do a little bit of implementation. Yeah, that really sounds like Ned Murphy film. So, um, and the order you, you choose to do things here in here is very much up to you. I personally like to think in, in class diagrams, and if I feel the need to it, do sequence diagrams to test run my class diagrams and then do some implementation. Other people may be like, oh, I like to code a little bit first to get things up and running. Then I would like to extract my code into a diagram of some sort and take a look at it from a design standpoint and find the things that are maybe wonky and go back to the implementation and refine and refactor and improve the design in that way. What, what you actually select to do it's very much up to you. I think the important part is that you don't spend a lot of time implement implementing or you spend a lot of time designing. But you should intertwine those two activities as good as possible. So maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes of design, 10, 20, 15 minutes of uh, 20 minutes of implementation. So we did a little bit of design. We did a little bit of implementation. Now I think it's time to go back into design and take a look at our implementation, what actually happened here, and how should the design be updated. But that will be a matter of the next uh, lecture. Any other questions? Yeah, shuffle should definitely be uh, be added. All right. 
then I bid you farewell and have a nice weekend. And remember, it's a workshop uh, week next week. So prepare by having a development environment and language of your choice up and running and ready. And we will have mo one more lecture before the workshop. Bye-bye.